Hey guys, Space Jesus here. Since the Rona has kept everyone at home, um, a lot of you decided to go outside and look up for a change. Is that a beta? It's the fucking sun. So you want to buy a telescope. You poor bastard. Have you considered cocaine? It's around the same price point and just as addicting if you can deal with the side effects. Gotta get rid of the fucking Starlink! So you still want a telescope? Alright, I warned you. Gotta get rid of the bloody Starlink. So how do I pick a scope? Well, there's so many different types, shapes and sizes. Well, the financially privileged among you might think, Ha! I'll just get the most expensive one I can afford. More money, more better. Right, Charles? <laughs> Shut up. You don't even know how to fucking operate this thing, let alone set it up or collimate it. Now, before we get into the different types of scopes and what they do, I need to make one thing crystal clear. There is no best beginner scope. It doesn't exist. All right? The recommendation I'm going to give you at the end of this video is based on my experience and is solely my opinion. Now, with that being said, do not buy a telescope from stores like Kmart, Big W, Target. All right? These are toys. A good rule of thumb is if it's advertised on the box that it has so much zoom or power, it's more than likely a toy. So some of the industry standard brand names you should be looking for when purchasing a telescope are brands like Celestron, Skywatcher, Me, Takahashi. Celestron have a great range of beginner's scopes and they won't break the bank. Skywatcher, they come in as a pretty solid mid-tier and all-rounder. Now if you purchase a Takahashi as your first telescope, you can go ahead and leave your address down in the comment section. I'm going to have to come and uh, help you out with that one. Takahashi, no one needs Takahashi. Hey, you don't need that. Just give, give me the Takahashi. Charles, ready the hounds. Well, now we know what brands to look for, let's have a look at the different types of telescope. Now, as a preface, we're going to be looking at all of these from a visual standpoint, all right? Astrophotography is a completely different kettle of fish. But if you'd like me to do a video on what kind of telescopes would be best suited for astrophotography, let me know in the comment section down below. First cab off the rank, we have refractors. Most beginner telescopes you find will be refractors. They're relatively affordable and easy to get a hold of. Refractors work by using lenses to focus the light that comes in through the primary objective down here at the eyepiece. Now, depending on its focal length, a refractor can give you anywhere between a medium to a really wide field of view. If you're not sure what focal length is, you can click the card up here and it takes you to another one of my videos where I explain what focal length is in a little bit more detail. Other than that, they're really good for looking at things like the moon and open star clusters. Next off the rank, we have reflectors, just like these two here. Now, as the name implies, they work by a reflecting light. Instead of using a lens system like in a refractor, a reflecting telescope uses a primary mirror cell located at the rear of the scope. Light travels through the aperture, down to the mirror cell at the back, and is reflected up to this secondary mirror here, where it is then pushed out at a 90 degree angle to the eyepiece. Now with the eyepiece being located on the side of the optical tube, it can make it a little bit awkward to use reflecting telescopes on equatorial mounts like this one. How? Now the issues with viewing angle on reflecting telescopes can be solved by mounting them on a Dobsonian mount, just like this one. But we'll come back to them a little bit later. Now reflecting telescopes are great for viewing things like star clusters and bright nebulae if you've got dark enough skies. Now finally, we have catadioptrics. Now catadioptrics is more of a collective term for scopes very similar to this one. This is a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Um, other catadioptric scopes include the Maxitov Cassegrain and the Ritchie Crichton telescope. Now the most common kind of catadioptric you're gonna see on the market is the Schmidt Cassegrain, or SCT as most of us call them. This right here is the Celestron C8. It's a really, really old model in the C8, but it's a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Now they work almost like a hybrid between the refractor and the reflector. At the front here, we have a glass corrector plate. The light travels in through this corrector plate to a primary mirror cell at the back. It is reflected off that primary mirror back up to this secondary mirror here, suspended inside of the corrector plate. From there, it is then reflected back down through a hole in the center of the primary cell and out to the eyepiece on the back. Now, just like with the refractors, having an eyepiece located at the rear of the telescope makes visual use much more comfortable. Catadioptrics by nature tend to have really long focal lengths, which makes them great for viewing things like planets and close-up lunar observation. Now we've seen all the different types of telescope, which one should you buy? 
Well, it's highly subjective. It really depends on what you want to be looking at with your telescope and whether or not you want it to be stationary or you'd like to be able to travel around with it. If you would like a telescope that's small, compact, lightweight and easily transportable so you can take it camping or something like that, I would highly recommend getting a refractor on an old azimuth now. They're cheap, lightweight and super portable. Now if you plan on doing all your observing from home in the backyard, I would recommend a Dobsonian. Now in my personal opinion, they are one of the easiest scopes to use and the price point is in your favour as well because a large Dobsonian is going to cost you much, much less than something like a Schmidt case grain of the same aperture. Now, for those of you looking to get into astronomy without breaking the bank, I would recommend something like the Celestron Skymaster 15x70 Astronomical Binoculars. Say that 10 times fast. They have a great field of view, long eye relief, so if you use glasses, they're going to be a lot more comfortable to use. And they come with a tripod adapter, so you can attach them to a camera tripod and use them hands-free with much more stability. Well, if you are looking to purchase a telescope at the end of all this, I would highly recommend you head over to the Bintel website, links are down in the description, and have a chat to the guys over there. Let them know about your situation, and I'm sure they'll be able to find a product that's right for you. Now again, I'm not sponsored by Bintel, but I do believe in promoting great stores with amazing products and excellent customer service, and that's exactly what you will find over at Bintel. So, if you jump on and have a chat to them, let them know the Space Jesus sent you. Now a lot of you have been asking me this question for quite some time and I still don't know why. But, Space Jesus, are you a tits man or an ass man? You tell me. If you're looking for the latest in space news and some cheeky memes, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And if you'd like to pick up some fresh merch like this, you can head over to their store. All applicable links are down in the description below. And as always, Cheers, stay safe, and clear skies. No cocaine for dogs. You have enough zoomies, no cocaine for dogs. You have enough zoomies as it is.